So you ought to be good right about where you're at. Right here. Yeah, don't fall now. I'll catch it on TV and I'll let the world see it. If I eat it, I eat it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, almost. A microphone checker. How you wanna do this? Um, like we normally do. <laughs> hey, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I'm out here with my buddy Chris, uh, who lives kind of, I, I call it down the street. And that's kind of way up. We grew up talking and saying things. We're down the road or down the street. You're about 35-ish yep. minutes away. Yep. So to me, that's down the street. So, um, cool blue? Cool blue on cool, the side. Cool blue over here and the regular fescue in the front? Tall fescue in the front. Okay. All right, so that y'all remember, uh, we come out here and looked at it before aerating seeding, yep. after aerating seeding. Uh, it looks really good right now. Um, we're about, what are we, third week of February? Third week of February. So uh, has your pre emergent been put down? Yes, everywhere except the back. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to have to seed the back. It's a little muddy back there. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We're, we're, everywhere we're, else, yes, pre-emergence down. Okay, everywhere else, pre-emergence down. Uh, he's got the protein over here he's going to put down for his fertilizer. And then uh, we're going to jump on a second video right after this at Aerate and Humic 12 is going down. That's it. All right, so full-blown DIY right here. We left all the uh, stuff I use at the, at the house. Chris just told me he watched a video Alan did on this and Alan kind of critiqued and give his uh, input on this RB60 Echo Spreader. And uh, my favorite thing is the big tires about it. What, what's your favorite thing about it? I'd have to say the tires. I mean, just for them being what they are and full of air, that's the best part. Going from a Scott Spreader to this, Yes, if anybody's ever used the little small Scott spreader plastic wheels. with the little thin plastic wheels yeah. and it sits real low to the ground, the handlebars are a little, little iffy, yep. and you try to push it across a four inch tall fescue that's really thick and dense, right. it is a battle. <laughs> a battle to put out fertilizer on these hills too yeah and then we got hills and, and a Good slope hill. out here so these tires right here are just the big tire full of air so much easier absolutely right don't feel the roots as bad and uh, i'd say second favorite thing i like about it uh -huh. is gonna be that spray I, I mean how far it throws how far it I throws that too i think but eight like it's about eight foot wide about eight foot wide okay i have right. i've never right. i've never seen this thing in action so all this will be brand new to me um so i'm excited to see it all right so it looks like we've got setting two over to 15. Have you ever spread the protein fertilizer? No. All right, never spread the protein. So this is brand new. Tell me, how would you even begin to start? I start with whatever's on the bag, right? The guidance on the bag, whatever that looks like. All right, the guidance on the bag. Let's open it and let's look and see what it says. All right. And let me say this. I know who put this bag of fertilizer in this box. <laughs> and this box is really tight. It's a tight fit box. There you go. Pull Make up it on it. Easy. Yeah, don't gouge that knife oh, in there because yeah. you do. You're, you're going to bust that bag open. Be careful of that. Look, they got some packaging, some foam in here, though, too. That's nice of them. Well, we, that was by design. Well, these are the boxes that we use for the uh, 25 pound grass seed. I've got mm -hmm. custom boxes coming for that. So. Yeah. That right there, we won't have that long. Right. First thing I see spreader settings, visit proteinusa.com specific spreader settings. All right, so it, it does say something about spreader settings and gives you a link to go look at. Four pounds per thousand. Now, let me save you a little time. The, the spreader settings that they have on there are for these commercial type spreaders you know mm -hmm. some of the big names like anderson's let's go stuff like that do i have a conversion chart on here for that? let's see if you have a conversion chart on here let's go a lot of the other common diy homeowner ones this is one of the nice things yep. about echo they earthway vigoro scott's echo yeah. yeah that is cool that's a very good feature right there good. so as of right now even with we got some information we still don't have a clue where to start yeah, Wouldn't you, would that, what that prill size looks like. I've heard it's really small and yeah. nice, you know, it comes out easy. Yeah. It makes me think it's going to be a lower setting on here. Exactly, yep. Uh, what exactly that would be though for four pounds a thousand. Exactly. So this is where you got to kind of figure all this stuff out. 
All right, so this right here is a super easy way to figure this out. All right, I've got, we, we just walked this off and measured this off roughly 4,000 square feet. We're going down at four pounds per thousand. It's a four down four, 16. That's a 40 pound bag. So we need a roughly half of the bag, or a little less than half of the bag in this spreader right here. So I think let's get it in here and be super careful mm -hmm. and try not to go over half. And we're gonna, yeah, we'll, we'll look at it and make sure everything's right before we take off. Size. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a real nice prill. It's real good. I think folks are going to be shocked when they uh, when they open that bag at how small that is. Right here. Yep, somewhere right in there, maybe, roughly. Oh yeah. I tell you what, you can do is set it set it beside this other bag right here. That's a good point. So I'm gonna say we're pretty dang close. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's close enough where we can go with it. What do you think? I think so. It's pretty good. If if we if we jack this up, I brought an extra bag of fertilizer, so, <laughs> so I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let you not get your whole yard done. Man, looking at the prill size, I'm thinking like two, three, somewhere. Yeah, right I'm there. telling you, you're going you're really gonna wanna go low with this. So we go at a two all the way to a 15. I've never used this particular spreader before. So if it were gonna be me, I would probably wanna go down here around a three, okay? That's about a fifth of the total. At 15, I'm down to a three. So the objective here is to get over the yard, get over this area one time, and then we're gonna look and see what we got left. And then we're gonna make an adjust. How many total square foot are you? 29. 30,000 square feet. I usually say 30. Yeah, 30,000 <laughs> square feet. So we don't want to be out here all freaking day messing with a That's spreader right. setting. We want to figure it out and get going. Yep. So I'm going to let you have at it. Now, do you use the edge guard on this? I do, yeah. I usually do one edge pass and then, okay. I, uh, and then I come back and do my, my stripe with it all. Real cool feature. You just drop that down, little edge guard, keep it off of your... Uh, you know your concrete and all now my favorite thing about the edge guard is it allows me to put a little bit on the sidewalk without throwing it way out here in my driveway because right. i'm gonna take my blower and just barely blow that and let that sit on those edges do your thing my man yeah that's why i always like to start on this side of the yard so okay. got a, you know a decent measurement yeah Right here. Yeah, when it's small too, you know, it's a small area of the yard. You can get your, you can get your dialed in on your setting. What I'm doing, especially with that strong too, I usually start here so I can say, all right, what's my walking speed looking like? That's right. Before you jump on the big part of the yard, that's right. He went all the way up the edge of the road here. Now he's coming back down this edge right here and throw them back to the inside. So this area right here is gonna be pretty much done. This right here is the test going up this hill right here. That's right. Push, push. <laughs> no traction. Yeah, no traction. All right, so let's see what you got left. I would imagine instead of going down and back up the hill, do you, do you spread it this way or do you go up and down the hill? When it's wet like this, when it's wet like this, I can't remember what I normally do. I'm trying to think of that spot over there. That's usually my only trouble, yeah. trouble spot. All right, so he's got a little area right here that kind of holds water, and this spot stays a little bit wet. I got an idea. Why don't you set up and come this away and let your fertilizer throw to the wet spot, get on the other side of the wet spot, and come back down, and then let them meet. See what I'm saying? That way you don't even have to ride through that. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think I think that's the way I'd do it too. As opposed to straight up and down. Coming down's fine. Going up where. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a little slippery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that I don't y'all can't really see it on TV, but this isn't uh on TV, on YouTube, whatever. 
This isn't a, a major drop off, but it's nowhere remotely close to being flat. It's a really nice uh, uh, slope right here. It can be tough going up and down it. Definitely don't want to forget to do that. I cannot tell you how many times I've edged one out and get about halfway through the yard and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to put the guard up. That's it. So you think it start right there though? Yeah, you can just come right here and kind of go right that way and that way. Or get you can get as close to it as you can. Oh yeah. All right, so I saw the prills. They landed right about here. So you ought to be good right about where you're at. Yeah, don't fall now. I'll catch it on TV and I'll let the world see it. If I eat it, I eat it. Oh, yeah. Oh, almost. Let me ask you this question. I prefer to throw back to the tire track. I can see the tire track right here. But my spreader also throws... 10 or 12 feet right so with you having the spreader that doesn't throw quite as far that will be many more passes across the yard yeah. does that make sense yeah. so how do you do it are you trying to make your fertilizer meet from the previous fertilizer or do you go all the way back to the tire track honestly i'm somewhere in between i try and split the difference between the tire track and where i know it throws to uh -huh. and i come right along there just so i can get more coverage okay since I got a big yard. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of pushing on this yard. This is a really, really big yard. Yeah. Cool. Have at it. Yeah, that's actually almost to the inside tire track. You're right. I covered that whole strip coming down both sides. It threw right back to the previous fertilizer path. All right, so what he was saying, what I said earlier, is he went down that strip, throwing to the inside, and then come down, throwing to the inside. So your strip, you're pretty confident you got good coverage on that. Yeah, All right. you just only come down it and up one time with the edge guard. Okay. Sometimes I even keep going straight right through here and just get all that off. That'd be a good place to lose your extra, because, hey, that's where people come in at. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, people come at, that's the first thing they see is like, right there. And like holy cow, this yard's green, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. You can see your tracks right about here. And again, this isn't typical. You know, typically you would start up there and work your way all the way down. But we got this really bad wet spot, so we managed that area first. Got the bottom. Now we're doing the top. Yeah. Now one thing Chris did say is he noticed this thing would jump a little bit on him as you're you're working it. It would kind of move back and forth a little bit. So with this particular spreader. Uh, keep your eye on that. Make sure it stays where you where you set it. Yeah. All right, so we went over this area one time, and look, we've actually got quite a bit of material left. What we're going to do now is go right back over the exact same area, and we're not going to change the spreader setting because we we used the about half of what we put in there roughly. And then when we move to the other side of the yard, we're gonna bump the spreader setting up. Now something just come to mind that you can probably do now is you can bump that up and then you can kind of stay away from the edge and throw all the way to the edge. Yeah, you know, cause we've already got the edges really good one time and uh, no need to kind of fine detail it the second time. Oh yeah. You think leave an edge guard on again, do the same thing, or maybe put one down the middle of it? No, I'd go right down the middle. You didn't edge it out twice, go right down the middle. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna have to do that little jiggle a little. Yep, gonna have to jiggle it a little bit. Right here at the end where the agitator don't work. I heard somebody said you can put zip ties on the end of that thing to help. Zip ties? I don't know how you do it, I just saw it on. Yes, you, you could actually take a zip tie and right. zip tie it and then cut it to where the a little bit of the zip tie is hanging down. Yeah. And it's going to act just like a, uh, agitator. an agitator. Oh, yeah. Now, you can see him having to try and bounce it a little bit. That's because the the uh, slope on the inside of the hopper isn't angled quite enough to where it just kind of flows out easily. He's having to bounce it just a little bit to get it to come out. But one thing I was telling Chris earlier is that 
I've got a $500 Lesco spreader and I have to bounce it too. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like I said, I think for the price point, it's a good uh, good spreader for what it is. Absolutely. Bikes. Absolutely These it is. tires make all the world of Yep, the oh. tires are key. Well, now you got 30,000 square foot, right? Yeah. And one bag covers. Now, does that include the backyard? What? The 30,000. Yes, that's everything. That, so you're about 25,000 front. 20,000. Well, yeah, if you if you, if you call, include this, yeah. the side, front side yeah. and back is where I break it out. So 25 and 5. Yep. Roughly. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we need to take them two bags and they need to go on the front. Yep. And that, that'll be about 20000 and you save the half a bag to go in the back. Right. That, okay. We're on point. We're back on track. So if we run this at a three and we had to go over it two times, if, if you do exact math, you could actually put it on a six mm -hmm. and go over it one time. I'm not sure if... I'm thinking yeah, I'm not sure if the whole opening for a three relates to the whole opening on a six. Does right. that make sense? If, yep. it, if it's actually double the amount of hole opening. Mm -hmm. So let's back it back down to about four and a half. That's what I'm thinking. Is that good? That's what I'm thinking. And let's try that because the, the last thing we want to do is get out there and get three quarters of the way done with the yard <laughs> and we ain't got no more fertilizer. Do now. Yeah, so you always want to be on the side of caution Definitely. and maybe back it up a little bit now what we can do next time if you're going to run the summer which is a 12024 the preel size is identical mm -hmm. so next time you can come over here and do this on a six and try see to see the double and that way if you go a little heavy on just this one side it ain't a big deal you know what right. i mean yep. and then that way on your second fertilizer application you can actually get that thing dialed in extremely close to where you would go over the yard one time right. and you're done yep. you can go in and have a sun drop <laughs> load her up let's get her done so we just le left that little half a bag over there to a side the half a bag covers 5,000 square feet that's what he's got in his back and uh, we're gonna get get in well I'm not he's actually doing all the work I'm not doing anything but talking I'm thinking maybe we'll just throw one bag in here. So you know, it's wet, keep it lighter because it's wet and the, you got the heels out there and all that. So, oh, I couldn't agree with you more, man. Yeah. Make the job as easy as you can make it. Yeah. Yep. So the hopper holds, uh, claims to hold 60. I'm guessing that's where the RB60 comes from. Yeah. And this right here is 40 pounds exactly. And yeah, you yeah you can probably get another half a bag in there. It'll probably mound up because, a little bit. Yeah, but, I'll probably never fill it that full. Yeah, yeah. On these hills especially. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, 40 pounds is heavy. I mean, yeah. 40 pounds is 40 pounds pushing it around in the yard. So, yeah. cool. So, he just made a great point, okay? For those of you that have a hilly yard or slopes, look at how I'm going down here. Look how sloped this is. Instead of starting here and pushing up the hill. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's right. Start over here where it's flat and easier and then and then go all around and that way his last edge pass is going to be coming up the hill. He's going to have less fertilizer in the hopper, so it's not going to be as heavy. Edge guard down. Get that corner good now. Bingo. Look at him. How he cleans that corner up nice. Keep going. I'm going to steal a little bit and I'm going to Put him a little extra in this corner right here. You can see the tip of that turf right there is yellow, but then when you get down, it's still green. Once he mows this one time, a little heat, a little rain, a little fertilizer, it's gonna push that yellow up to the top and he's gonna mow it and cut the yellow clean off of it. And he's gonna have his nice green yard again. Winter time can be rough. I'm telling you, it can be rough. We've had a really, really hardcore winter here. Uh, for us, it's been hardcore. Had two big ice storms and just crazy amounts of rain. And back earlier in the winter, some really, really, really cold, cold days. And it just kind of zaps the turf. Go a little faster when it's flat. Yeah, flat ground, you can move with it. All right, here's where you got to man up. Come on. Man up, brother. 
Now think about me on YouTube. So you so all the edges are done and look at that i got plenty of material in here so i'm, I'm feeling confident i'm feeling like we're doing pretty good yeah. why are you huffing and puffing because <laughs> man it's been winter yeah i know winter time that first fertilizer man you should have saw me in the, you should have saw me in the yard the other day spraying i was just like <laughs> yeah. a couple of weeks we'll get it right that's right when i look at this what if this were my yard, what I would do, I would break this section up right here, come straight down and straight over and catch this little corner right here. And I would pretend that this, this break off right here, this heel points where my yard stopped. And so I would stop right here and turn around and make all my passes this way. That way I didn't have to go up and down that heel and then do the heel long ways like this you follow me yeah. does that make any sense yeah. that way you don't have to walk up and down the hill it's a whole lot easier yeah. and so instead of you know, instead of running all the way down and all the way back up you're just going to stop right here and cut off and you'll have enough throw up here and enough throw down that you'll get this spot good <laughs> bingo look at there cut it off turn around right here Mush! Yes, sir, just like that. This is bringing back those offensive lineman days. Offensive lineman days, pushing that sled, right? Yeah, that sled. you'll never forget. <laughs> All right, now you know you turned around right about here. Why don't you come back here and, and make you one pass going that way and use the corner of that bed down there as your guide, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, don't go down the hill to the box, stop at the top of the hill. Because when we do the slope, we're going to go all the way down and go around and come back. Like down and around that way on the slope? Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to say it's easier than walking up and down the hill. I'm trying it new, yeah. It might be a new way to look at it. Yeah. I had never thought about going around. Try it. If we booger up, I got it's some sure fertilizer. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know it's going to be easier. It's going to be easier. You're hurting me watching you walking up and down them hills, man. <laughs> And so this right here is at the peak of the hill, kind of. So ain't that easier walking like that than walking up and down it? All right, there you go. Now you got this area right here that's done, and when you're making long passes, you turn around right here. Right here was your first pass, so you can come right there and go all the way across, and when you get over there, jump up there and get that little corner. Exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, boy. Right there. You probably, you probably pretty close. All right, so you can see how he run this all the way out. And this is that little corner up in here we were talking about. The, the woods kind of come out, so he comes down and, and cleans up this little corner. And now he can work this area right here. And then once he does that, he's kind of made his, the rest of his yard a big box. You can see he's already went over this little strip right here. And when he gets to the end, he just, he lets go of the handle, cuts it off, turns around, gets lined up, and goes again. The hopper's getting lighter. <laughs> yeah, it is getting lighter. It is now. You look like you're moving quicker too, huh? <laughs> Still got plans to possibly take this big tree down. That way he's got these two beds over here and this will be wide open. I like that idea. All right, so we're back on the big box area of the yard that we've kind of intentionally chopped the yard up. That way we're only left with this spot right here. All right, so he's coming down here to the end of the, his run where the hill is and whoop, shut her down, get turned around. Have at it again. Got just a little bit left right here and when you eyeball it from what we've done so far and what we have left, roughly half. Yeah. So I think we're on a pretty good pace right here. I think we are. That would probably do the hill part right here if we were to cut the yard completely in half. Yeah. That but <laughs> but what I think, let's stick to our game plan. Why don't you keep going back this way? When we run out, we'll stop the spreader. I'll go get a bag of fertilizer and put some fertilizer in it, and we'll pick right up where we left off. Now, I just done a video and I said I didn't like dumping fertilizer in the spreader 
on the grass, but we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll be all right. <laughs> it's gonna rain so much That's the next right. three we'll days, right. probably. So he ran out about right here. So uh, we just come out, filled it back up. And we're gonna pick up right where we left off. Yeah. Yeah. So where where are you at in your line? You're about right here. My track. So you slide down just a little bit, and and you'll go around, yeah. and just just make your turn and follow the hill, and try to stay as far as you are from here to the peak. Right. Stay that distance when you get over there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and we're, we're taking this and we're kind of trying to make it flat. Right. So we don't go up and down. We're going with the heel long ways. I swear if you slip and fall, I promise you I won't show anybody. Now watch this right here. Just gonna kind of make the turn. Bingo. Now you want to pick up with where you left off. Now we're running sideways with the heel, long ways with the heel. Way to follow it. Hit it. All right, so we got about two more passes to go on the yard, and look, I'm telling you, I think we're gonna come out just about right on this. Close. Pretty dang close. So his previous pass on the hill, he threw down to kind of where the the V is at right here, and now he's going right here, throwing back to that V. And then he'll come right here and make one last pass, throw over that way, throw over to his edge. All right, so just had a little handful of fertilizer left in there. And he's just gonna kind of lose it out down through here and we're good to go. All we need is a little rain now. I mean, we got a little bit of pebbles out here and I don't mind that one bit cause I'm gonna blow them or you're gonna blow them real easy and just let them lay right there on that edge. What is this, Husqvarna? I see orange. What is it, a B, B, 150 BT? 150 BT right there. Yeah, with this much yard and all these leaves, I got to have a backpack. Yeah, the backpack is a must <laughs> here. To That's right. <laughs> it's been a good one. I say that, man, it's not Second pull. Never, ever, ever waste good fertilizer. Even though you may have been super careful on this edge, the chances of some getting out here on this hard surface is really, really good. Always take your blower, go back and just tuck it up against the edge right there, and hopefully we have good luck and this edge will hold it up through the summer. You caught your breath yet? I'm pretty good now. It leveled out on that driveway there. I can walk that. That's right. You know, that hill, it's like, man. Yeah. So, honest opinion, is it easier for you to walk up and down the hill like that, or is it easier to walk long ways with the hill? Yeah, definitely long ways with the hill. Okay, so it was a little easier. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, help that in one way. That's, that's what I wanted. And, and that all boils down to just blocking off the yard in certain ways. That's really all you're doing. Yeah, I think the first couple times I got out here, I'm like, let me just go straight back and forth after I do my trim pass. and. Work exactly. Down, but now I think I can do more what you're exactly. talking about too. Exactly. So, so being, up a more. yeah. So, so being out here and watching you push this, you have humbled me in an, another <laughs> way. Um, I got a bunch of cool equipment that makes my job really easy. Yeah. And now I'm starting to understand more and more and more why the you know the Joe homeowner uh, is super. Um, wanting to know what that exact spreader setting is. That's a lot of work you just did. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Miscalculate a and you miscalculate a little <laughs> bit and you got a little bit left over and yeah. you're like, oh, I gotta walk the yard again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm gonna really get a little more diligent in trying to help folks get dialed in on that spreader setting because after watching you do all this work today, I mean, I'm over sweating <laughs> and I haven't done anything. You know I what I mean? Sun drop. <laughs> I need a sun drop and I haven't touched anything. Yeah. So, uh, uh, he asked the question a minute ago, about two weeks. Is that what you said when you should see a difference? Yeah, I'm thinking about the temps too. Yep, temperatures, 100% temperature driven, uh, water driven, need some rain on it, which we're gonna get that get in the next couple of days. <laughs> and then I think the forecast for next week is supposed to be a little bit nicer, I believe. 60s. 60s, starting getting up. Uh, once it gets up to where you mow it one time, it's on like a pot of neck bone. Yeah. Once you mow it, 
and you wake it up, yeah. you're going you're you're in it for the rest of the year. Right. So that's a good tip if you got something coming up. Like for instance, I have. I'm taking Jax to Philadelphia yep. next week for his next surgery, and I'm dying to mow the grass. I actually wanted to mow it the other day before yep. I put my fertilizer down, but I didn't because I know that as soon as I mow it, I'm going to start asking it to grow. Right. And with me going out of town, I didn't want to come back to a yard knee deep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So patience. I said, no, don't mow it. I'll mow it when I get back. My wife helps me with that, the patience piece. She's like, no, you don't need to mow today. That's right. You there you go. Always, hey, a good <laughs> wife is invaluable, I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling you. Uh, man, I, wouldn't do no, I couldn't do nothing without my wife, that's for sure. What we learned today, we took this spot over here, and we learned what spreader setting we needed to use. And we got it figured out. And we ended up on a four and a half. Is that what? Five and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, four and a half. Yeah, four and a half. We figured out on the smaller part of the yard first and got that. And if you if your yard's wide open, just go out and measure a thousand square feet, put four pounds of fertilizer, or if you're using this particular one, in there, and you can kind of do the math from there. And uh, I think we got it. I think you're dialed in. So all the rest of the the twelve o twenty four, the six o o, and uh, the other two. Uh, starter fertilizer in the winterizer the preel size is identical mm -hmm. so now you know uh That's well, nice yeah it is nice each application each like application so, yep they're all the only thing different is the 600 is a little bit higher rate and the starter fertilizer is like four and a half pounds instead of four so that means you might need to one yeah, you might have to bump that up, maybe a half or you know, yeah. you know, a little increment or something. Right. So that's about as uh, bare bones as you get right there. Start from scratch, brand new spread uh, fertilizer or a spreader that I've never seen, brand new fertilizer you've never used, yeah. and in one pass over the yard, we pretty much got it figured out. Mm -hmm. So cool that prill size was awesome though. I really, I, I the like prill that. size is really really nice yep. i'm telling you and and it's not so tiny that you can't see what you're doing yeah you know what i mean that yeah. you can i've used greens grade or micro prill before mm -hmm. and they're so tiny you're looking and you're like well where, where where's the fertilizer at yeah yeah so uh so it's good prill size that's no doubt well we're gonna go over here and we're gonna spray now and we're gonna film that so we'll have two videos out of this one and uh again appreciate you letting me come over yep, I'm, this is fun uh <laughs> i'll bring a chair and sun drop next time i was gonna say he likes watching yeah it. <laughs> hey it's fun not having to do anything i, I think that's cool so anyway appreciate you watching i'll check you later